Have you ever wondered about the untold stories behind the welcome to fabulous Las Vegas sign? Or imagined yourself saying I do in a wedding chapel where Elvis might officiate your ceremony? But that's just the beginning. From the breathtaking landscapes of Red Rock Canyon to the captivating exhibits at the Mob Museum. In today's video, you get to discover a side beyond the typical tourist attractions. Let's get to it. Number one, the lighted sign. Welcome to Las Vegas. The lighted sign that says, Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas, has been there since the 1950s to welcome people. People from all over the world want to take pictures in front of the famous Las Vegas sign the way they should be. There may be a line to get a good picture because it will likely be busy. Get there early in the morning to avoid crowds. To see the sign, it's better to take the deuce bus. If you buy a two-hour ticket, you can get off the bus in front of the sign, take some great pictures, and then get back on the bus to the strip. Most of the time, there are skilled photographers near the sign. Even though the prices are high, it's not too bad if you're with a big group. Number two, tour the wedding channels. A classic Las Vegas wedding church is where a lot of people from all over the world come to get married by Elvis. Nevada's marriage license rules are as loose as they can be, which is why Vegas weddings are so popular. Over the years, the wedding venues in Las Vegas have become well known. There are some beautiful wedding chapels in the city that you should see even if you don't want to get married there. A few of the most well known are the Little White Wedding Chapel, the Graceland Chapel, and the Little Vegas Chapel. Check out the places where a lot of famous people got married and posed for pictures. A priest dressed as Elvis for old-fashioned pictures might show up if you're lucky. There are a few churches on the Strip, and most of them are in downtown Las Vegas. If you want to see the inside of most churches, you can just walk in and ask a few questions. Number 3. The Famous Las Vegas Strip The Las Vegas Strip is the most well-known part of Sin City. It is lined with hotels and casinos on both sides. If you're in Vegas and want to find bars, restaurants, casinos, or music halls, this is the place to be. There are four miles of Las Vegas BLVD that make up the Strip. It takes an hour and a half to walk from one end to the other. Take the Deuce Bus, which stops in front of all the big hotels along the Strip. It's faster that way. Also, this is one of the best Vegas free things to do. You might be able to see a free concert on Fremont Street or the water show at the Bellagio if you go for a walk at the right time. There are a lot of bars and restaurants on the Las Vegas Strip that are open 24 hours a day. The Deuce Bus goes all the way across the Strip. Number four, hiking at Red Rock Canyon. Taking a hike in Red Rock Canyon. Red Rock Canyon National Park is 30 minutes west of Las Vegas and can be seen from the Las Vegas Strip. It's a great reason to rent a car. The park's red rock shapes that rise up to 3,000 feet are what it's known for. Most people who visit Red Rock Canyon like to hike, ride bikes, and climb rocks. You can also have fun at the park by riding horses. Take a moment to feel like a cowboy in the Wild West and enjoy the views of the tall mountains. There are trips of Red Rock Canyon with guides that use scooters and e-bikes to get you around the national park. Also, helicopter tours are very famous and offer great views, but they are pricey. The Red Rock Canyon is open every day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tickets start at $5 for people on foot and $20 for cars. Number five, the Mob Museum. It's one of the most interesting museums in Nevada. You can find it in downtown Las Vegas. The museum is on four floors and used to be the city's courthouse. It has displays about the past of organized crime and law enforcement in the US. Visit the brick wall from the St. Valentine's Day Massacre and learn about how it affected mob operations. You can also stand in a room covered in dollar bills from floor to ceiling. To get into the interactive museum exhibits, you need to buy premium seats. This could be the firearm training model, the ghost bar and distillery, or the crime lab. Both the speakeasy and the crime lab were great and worth the money. The Mob Museum is open every day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Prices start at $22.95, and you can see everything in two to four hours. Number six, Mojave National Preserve. Mojave National Preserve is a huge recreation place in the middle of the California desert that is just waiting to be explored. 
The park has a lot of interesting things to see, from the remains of mining towns, to beautiful valleys and rock formations. The national park is very big, so we suggest you use a 4x4 to get around. If you know how to drive in the backcountry, this place looks like it was made for off-roading. It's a lot of fun. Some of the best parts of the park are the Granite Mountains, the Sima Dome, and the Kelso Dunes. You can drive, but climbing, backpacking, and biking are also good ways to get around the huge park. It takes about an hour to drive from downtown Las Vegas to the northern Ivanpa Park Gate. You can visit Mojave National Preserve for free. Number 7. The Venetian Resort The lobby of the Venetian feels like you've traveled to the Bel Pies just by walking in. The high ceiling is covered in frescoes, and the focal point of the room is a huge gold sphere held up by four golden women. After walking by a copy of Venice's Campanile and Rialto Bridge, this registration area in the style of a basilica should feel very fake, but it's so fancy and out of this world that you can't help but be amazed. The building is huge. The Venetian and Palazzo hotels together have more than 7,000 rooms and 3 million square feet of space for shops and meetings. But what might stand out the most is the huge number of restaurants. Estiatorio Milos has the best seafood and best lunch deal on the Strip, Mot 32 has great Chinese food, and superstar chefs Tetsuya Wakuda and Eyal Shani have just opened new eateries. The Venetian has everything you need, not just places to eat. You can climb on the wall, get nutritional advice, and even have your gait analyzed at the gym, which is actually a canyon ranch. The spa has a lot of surprising extras, like acupuncture, Number 8. Nomad Las Vegas Nomad Las Vegas is a hotel within a hotel, specifically the Park MGM, the completely rethought former Monte Carlo. But unlike some other hotel-in-hotel -hotel pairings in Las Vegas, there's some synchronicity here, since the Sedel Group had a hand in the redesign of the entire property. But while Park MGM is fun and accessible, Nomad is its totally grown-up side. It's all old-world luxury here, with sexy dark corners and a grand library-inspired restaurant. When you walk into Nomad, it's like wandering into some amazing secret hidey hole. If you thought you were too sophisticated for Las Vegas, you haven't been here yet. Number 9. The Bellagio Conservatory and Botanical Gardens This city is in the middle of a desert, so it doesn't have a lot of plants while the beaches and golf courses at the resort have lots of palm trees and other plants, the Bellagio Botanical Gardens are truly unique. When you walk into the greenhouse, you'll forget you're in the middle of the desert right away. With its stunning decorations and beautiful colors, the 14,000 square foot area is a real treat for the eyes. In its greenhouse, the Bellagio puts on seasonal shows, and every couple of months, the conservatory gets a whole new look. The holiday display in December was our best. It had Santa Claus, the Nutcracker, and a lot of Christmas trees with fairy lights on them. When there is a yearly show, the Bellagio Conservatory and Botanical Gardens are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The conservatory is closed to the public when the shows are not going on. The parking lot is free and can be reached from the hotel hallway. Number 10, Fremont Street Experience in downtown Las Vegas. The Fremont Street Experience is a fancy shopping mall located at the northern end of the Las Vegas Strip. It's open all the time, and there are so many bright signs inside that it's hard to tell the difference between day and night. A lot of people don't know this, but Fremont Street used to be the most important street in Las Vegas. It was built in the same year as Las Vegas and was the city's first paved road. There is also the Golden Gate Hotel and Casino on Fremont Street Experience. It was the first casino in Las Vegas. It's more of a shopping arcade now, with lots of shops, signs, and artifacts that tell you of its past. You can visit Fremont Street Experience whenever you want for free. At the start of Fremont Street, in front of the Golden Nugget Casino and Hotel, the Deuce Bus stops. Number 11, Vidara Hotel and Spa. This hotel, Vidara, might be the most like a vacation spa that you'll feel while you're in Las Vegas. The entrance has high ceilings, and the whole hotel is designed to let in as much natural light as possible, even though it's a glass high-rise in the very modern city center. 
It's the only hotel in Las Vegas that doesn't allow smoking or gambling. One of the nicest spas in the city. And it's never as crowded as, say, Qua at Caesars or one of the other spas in big casino resorts. It has a meditation room, a waterfall, and wooden floors, so make it a point to visit while you're here. Even though Vidara rooms cost a little more than some hotel rooms of the same size, upgrading is worth the extra money, because you get so many extras. Studios have small kitchens, so you don't have to go out to find food all the time. If you're staying for a while, there's also a cleaning service you can use. Number 12. Luxor. The Luxor is one of the most interesting hotels in Sin City. Its tall pyramid shape and sphinx-adorned front make it look like a piece of Egypt, even though it's right in the middle of the strip. Perhaps not as famous as the Bellagio, the Luxor makes up for its lack of style with its sheer size and wide range of activities. All of your favorite card games and slot machines are spread out over a huge casino floor. There are also a lot of live shows, such as Blue Man Group, Carrot Top, and the adults-only Fantasy. Then there are bodies. There are 13 human bodies and more than 260 organs on show at the exhibition, which gives a quirky look into the fascinating human body. The Luxor is also home to the HyperX eSport Arena, where gamers can try out the newest games in tournaments and free play. The area has a 50-foot LED video wall, a bar, and food available on site. You can see that this place has something for everyone. There you have it, the best things you can do in Las Vegas in 2024. Which of these activities have you engaged in, or are you eager to do? Let's hear from you in the comment section. Like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, click the bell button so you can get notified when we release a new video. Thanks for watching.